Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV for some daily news. It is Thursday, it's a glorious sunny day in the city of Liverpool and we've got some wonderful news to be discussing. I mean, is it wonderful? You make the decision on that. I'm just in a really good mood, so why not? Everything's wonderful. I'm taking the Brendan Rodgers approach to, to positive PR today. It's wonderful. Um, let's start then with a, a, some quotes from Jurgen Klopp that came out yesterday. As we know, the players started back at pre-season, or a, a good number of them did, certainly. Um, we will come to your comments on everything that we discussed a little bit later on in the show, but for now, we'll plough through this. Um, it, interesting from Jurgen Klopp, anyway. Um, he says... Talking about transfers, we've made a lot of good things so far. Even if you cannot see it, you can imagine we've done a lot behind the scenes. Sometimes you need to be patient, and that's what we are at the moment. We have to wait for the right moment, and we'll see what happens. So, you know, very interesting that you should put this out. And the problem with it is that I've, I've lost the Jürgen Klopp intonation and not done it with the mad bastard smile um, that inevitably everything that comes out of his mouth is delivered alongside so you know it, maybe I've, if I've delivered that a bit flat it probably doesn't come across great but if you deliver it really up he's hey loads of good things happening behind the scenes la 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 um, yeah I, for me anyway I took that in a, in a really in a really positive sense <clears throat> and I like the bit when he says but you've got to wait for the right moment you know, Chris and I did the podcast this week, which is available now. If you need some, some podcasty goodness in your ears, then do listen to the Redman TV podcast on the ACAST app and on the website as well. Um, let me talk about why Liverpool aren't like flying full steam ahead to get in certain of the players that we've that we that we know will be in link with. At least not from the outside looking in. And it's because I think there's certain there's just a little bit of gamesmanship that needs to be played around these players when you're coming up against players that uh, clubs don't want to sell. This kind of you kind of have to let players stew on things. You have to let things mature a little bit, and then you, you see how things get on. I mean, a good example of this is look at the Lukaku stuff. Now, it was reported a few minutes ago that apparently a deal had been struck with Man United. Then Jim White subsequently come out and said, "Nah, it's not happening. No deal's been reached between Everton and Man United yet." But this is like Lukaku. It's been known that he's wanted to leave for months and months and months now, and yet you know the season ended what six, seven weeks ago or whatever. It's a, a, a deal still hasn't been agreed. Chelsea haven't come and swept it. Man United still haven't quite uh, haven't managed to get it across the line yet. You know, Everton are in a great position. They don't need to sell. And they can also put a high valuation on them. So sometimes these deals do take a little bit longer to it's longer to mature. And I would expect similar things to happen with Liverpool this window as well. Um, so yeah, but again, just brilliant to see Jurgen back in training. Brilliant to talk about like looking in the faces of the players and seeing that they're ready. And I, which I love, I genuinely love the fact that I love the idea that he can look at a player and be like, yeah, he's up for it, but no, you on the treadmill for another day. You know, he, he, he gets a real, real sense of the players, which I think is absolutely amazing. And it just means that we can start getting excited and start gearing up towards the games, which kick off next week. Um, so we move on. Linking into some of this stuff, obviously players back, which means we're getting tons of quotes coming out. Um, the official Liverpool site covering loads of this stuff, of course. But John Flanagan, one thing that was quite interesting, I think we mentioned mentioned the number of players that come back yesterday, and how the vast majority of the players that have come back are fullbacks for a position that we were very light in. And you know, you could make, you could maybe make the case that we're light on top quality in the fullback position which I think is kind of fair to a point but the the amount of players who play who, who play fullback for Liverpool who are, who are in pre-season training at the moment for us Flanagan being one of them again on the podcast Chris and I discussed this the Flanagan thing and we just don't know what player we're getting back but again great to see the quotes from um, and he just says, I can't wait to get started. I think it's uh, it's a bit of a fresh start. I had a few injuries. Hopefully they're past me now. Uh, I'm coming back after a full year of training on my knee, so it's all good. And that's the, you know, he also mentions just in the midst of that about how yeah he didn't play enough games at Burnley. Um, but that that leads on to the whole thing. He's like, look, I, I had the knee injury, but I've had a year now of of training day in day out making himself available and now he's fit and maybe that's just what he needed and you could argue he might have been better spent just being at Liverpool for that but hopefully you know John Fl someone like John Flanagan he is one of those players I think that gets worse in people's memories weirdly you know he every time he pulls on a share for Liverpool the guy gives not on less than 110 percent and that that can be sometimes seen as a bit of a an insult it's like Dick Dick outruns loads 
Jordan Henderson just runs loads. When you know you you you, you, you denigrate the role that they, they, they play on the side sometimes. And you go back to 13, 14, and John Flanagan was outstanding there. And I know we're a number of years removed, and he has had you know loads of injury problems. I love the fact that he just writes, Yeah, I've had a few injuries. <laughs> like you've had loads of injuries, mate. You've been really injured. Um, but he's clearly not letting it bother him. And you know, for someone like Flanagan, I think he says he says a fresh start. We might say last chance saloon. I, the, the one and the same thing the positive attitude the person with a positive attitude says it's a fresh start and I, I think John Flanagan will go into this pre-season campaign thinking yeah great you know maybe the the time of Burnley is one of those things where he's, he, he has looked at his future and thought you know I'll, I'll, I'll be lucky I'll, I'm, I'm, I think he knows it already but he's very lucky to be at Liverpool obviously and he, you know, he knows that that's where his, if he wants to be a professional footballer if he doesn't go and give it his all at Liverpool You'd be lucky to get a Burnley, get, get, to, to get a game at a Burnley, and you know modern football would say, well, if you can't play for Burnley, you're good enough to play for Liverpool. Football's mad, and human beings are are, are odd creatures, aren't we? And you know th there is very much a difference between I think playing for your for your hometown team and playing for some of the team that doesn't really rate you as highly. I think we all see you get loads more out of John Flanagan in a red shirt, and hopefully, fingers crossed for me anyway, more to come from from Flano because he could. Could it exist? Everything exists in possibility right now. That's the beauty of preseason. Um, he could provide an option for the manager this season, which I think would be astounding. Um, similarly, Danny Ings, not as far along in his development, of course, but another guy who knows what it's like to 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 suffer through injuries. Um, again, some really great motivational quotes from him. He says, "You know, if you dwell on things too long, you'll never make it back. You need to obviously be hurt for a while, but then you need to get your head down, focus, and crack on." That's always been my mentality. There wasn't really any other choice. Get bang that on a poster. In fact, if anyone wants to bang that on a poster for us, on, on a on an inspirational style, like to go on the wall of the toilets in here, please do it and tweet it to us at the Red Bed TV because Danny Ings should like he is a, a walking Instagram post. That man, you know, he, he's he's a good looking fella. He's got great things to say, and his girlfriend is astounding looking. Uh, so he's already great Instagram value, but when he throws in the quote, yeah, amazing. Um, good, you know, he's, he's back doing ball work. He says, which is good to see. As we suspected, he's not as far along in his uh, his rehab as he was a year ago. So it, we might see a little bit of him towards the back end of pre-season. I suspect what we might see is there'll be you, know, you might get under 18s under 23 games in, in friendlies. You might when Liverpool go away on tour, you could see him involved in them. But then Jürgen might want to keep him close. Time's going to tell. But I'd, just great, great to see again a lot of Danny Ings' character. I think a lot. I think too much is made in modern football of players having to be absolute worldies, you know. And you know, Messi and Ronaldo and Suarez and Neymar et al. Have, have raised the bar in terms of what what a footballer can do with a football, you know. Um, but there's something to be said. I've seen plenty of players with unbelievable talent, unbelievable talent, uh, completely piss it up the wall because they lack the character, drive, and motivation of a of a Danny Ings or a John Flanagan or, or whatever. So having those set of characteristics, they are for me a core characteristic that every Liverpool player needs to have. And I, for one, would be, I'm excited to see those players hopefully, hopefully get back into the fold for Liverpool this season. Anyway, the, uh, some updates in regards to the Naby Keita stuff. As ever, keep your thoughts coming in on this. I'll, I've got my comments here lined up on the YouTube. Um, if you're on Facebook, if you're on whatever, we'll come to you in a moment. Tom's giving me the eye, which presumes, is there a, is there a super chat? There are so many super chats, Paul. Wow, okay, so yeah, I will super chat woos incoming. Um, but just like on the Naby Keita stuff, apparently reports coming out that he's met twice with Leipzig this week in an attempt to um, to sort out his future. Loads of reports coming out of uh, Guinea, funnily enough, obviously, which is his, um, where he's from originally, or it's his nationality, if nothing else. Um, I couldn't tell you where he was, you know, where his, where his family home was. Um, We'll add that. We'll add that to the list of, of research if he does sign for Liverpool. But no, he's told them that he wants to he wants to move to Liverpool, which is just you know not a massive step. The big look ultimately the big step is seeing him uh, tracking him on Snapchat when he's flying on his way. And you see him you see him arriving at, uh, at Liverpool Airport or whatever. Um, but just I think baby steps ties in with the Klopp thing. Things are clearly happening, 
with regards to Liverpool transfers. And yeah, it's not full steam ahead, but sometimes these things do take a, need to take some baby steps. But what's interesting, and I think it's a testament to the guy's character, is that the report said that he doesn't want to spit on the club, which effectively is saying, you know, uh, this is my future. I've, he's got his heart set on moving to Liverpool. He's going to speak to, to Leipzig and hope that they appreciate the human side of this for him. Um, but he's not going to be an absolute dick. And and you know and 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 be horrible and, and go on you know and be be basically be a, be a, be a bad guy to try and extricate his way from uh, from Leipzig. But good and, and you know hopefully this is just more steps. It's another example of a player that Liverpool have clearly won over, and it's now just in the hopefully it's in the hands of the business side of things, uh, which is good. Uh, it's time for the Liverpool owners and the Liverpool you know transfer management team, whatever you want to call it, to. To put the money where the mouth is, hopefully, and, and and make these transfers a reality. So, leave us your thoughts then on, on that. We're going to get stuck straight into your comments on a, on a whole host of things. Um, don't forget to give this video a like while you're watching it right now before we crack on. Tom? So, we have nine Super Chats. Wow. I've got one just come straight to the top. It, it comes to the top on me, on me here, so I'll start with this one if you don't mind. I've got Adam Knight, Super Chat. Woo! Five pounds. Adam Five pounds. There's there's two after that, Paul. Okay, so just these are just the ones yeah, that have no, come yeah. up here. There's a knock fifty from Terje Peterson. Super yeah. chat. Woo! Um, by signing Cater, what would that possibly put less pressure on the stoppers, thereby reducing the need for a new stopper? I I I guess you mean centre half in that regard. Potentially, you know. Listen, the, Liverpool at their free flow and attacking best are always going to be a little bit light at the back. And I think that was the notion of getting a Van Dijk, just getting a player who's just a little bit better defender than what we've got to help us defend a little bit better. But look, it, it, it's clear. Look, Dejan Lovren was one of the best centre halves in the Premier League, playing for Southampton. You know, we considered him a twenty odd million pound move, where you know money well spent at the time. But he's playing with two defensive midfielders in front of him, and it's not again. Look at Spurs. Spurs' defensive record is out of this world. But again, they put some. They've got Wan Yama. They've got Dembele. They've got <coughs> Soko. Um, you know, they've got uh, Eric Dyer. They they preference shield and the shield and the defence, and maybe that could be a real option for for Liverpool. I think it's a it's a it's a very good point, and but it, it does it leave us lacking in positions further up the field? It could lead to a horses for courses situation. There will be games when we do need two guys shielding the the, the defence, and there'll be other times where we can probably just put all the attacking players in the world on. So, Terje, thanks very much for that question. That's amazing. Tom, super chat. So we had one from yesterday that just followed through. I guess. Okay. Uh, Paul Downall, uh, just one palm with no comment. Okay, super chat, woo. Um, Patrick Boyle, super chat, woo, two pounds. What are the plans for RMTV in Germany? Paul, I'm glad you asked that. So we announced this on the podcast yesterday. The, we need to do an official announcement. I, I, this is Chris's... Oh, is Chris, Chris, you watching? Chris is there. He's, he's in the comments. Ask Chris about this. Chris, when are we putting all these graphics out and stuff? Let us know. Um, let me know if you, I mean, let the people know in the comments. Probably drop me a WhatsApp or Ross. <laughs> um, but no, Liverpool, we are going over to Germany for the Liverpool tour. We will be doing a live show in Berlin on the 28th of this month, of July, which is the night before the Hertha Berlin game. Very, very exciting. Going to be amazing. It's going to be a ticketed event, but it's there's going to be some extra bonus things that, that happen as a result of it. I, I believe it's a tenner uh, ticket. How that translates to Euros, I'm not entirely certain, but we'll figure all that out. All that announcements, I guess, will be coming, if not today, then tomorrow. But again, Chris is in the comments with hashtag nips for tips. Um, so if you want to ask Chris some questions in the comments by all means do um, but thanks very much for the question Tom so the very first one we got today was by Steve O'Hare he woo, says woo, woo for me Tom woo <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, keep up the good work Redman TV if PSG actually decided to come in for Coutinho with a 100 million bid who would we bring in to replace him Kylian Mbappe really just yeah. seriously Really? Liverpool, that's what Liverpool would do. I, I look, at, you know, if, if Real Madrid came in with a bid more for it, you know, he, he would probably choose Real Madrid, to be fair. But I, I think if Liverpool were to do something like that, I think because Liverpool have been monitoring the Mbappe stuff, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if they just went, OK, there you go, 
bang. And people might say, and I, look, I, I, I do this a lot, and I, I don't mean to do this all the time when I kind of second guess people's reactions to stuff. But nevertheless, um, look at the Fernando Torres thing. The first thing pretty much that FSG did, they know Fernando Torres is going. So they go, okay, we'll bang Andy Carroll for 35 million. Yeah, it was a horrendous mistake. But at the time, you know, they, they didn't know. We had Damian Camoli in charge of transfers as well. Um, but not not afraid to go to go big to to replace to replace big if needs be, particularly because Liverpool now have got a better ability to attract players, what with the potential for Champions League, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, there's um, uh, yeah, I w- I would imagine something like that. You know, again. Uh, who knows? I don't think it'll happen. If I'm perfectly honest, I think it would. It's like saying, "What would you do if you if you got if you got ran over today?" Like, well, I'm gonna I, I'm probably not gonna happen. I don't want to jinx it because I don't genuinely don't want to be run over. But but you, you, hopefully, take my point on that, Tom. Uh, Aiden Brannock with yeah. two dollars and uh, hashtag and a, tips no, no, no. for me to And news. a super chat. Well, hey. <laughs> Uh, and he please, says hashtag tips for Machen nudes. Yeah, it is a thing. There's one thing that's never going to happen, and there's one thing that will happen. Payjack nudes is definitely going to happen, and we discussed <laughs> this. It's a groundswell at the moment. When it becomes a movement, eventually it's going to happen. So I could, by all means, by all means, if you wish to continue that. You can do. I'm not. I'm. You know. I can't tell you what to do and what to type in. By all means, feel free to do that. But if you want to waste your time, continue down the, the route with me. If you want to make something happen, hashtag pay Jack News. <laughs> Just saying. Um, Any more? Yeah. So Jason Doherty with five euro. Okay, with Tom. Super chat. I'm. I don't have the enthusiasm. Give us a noise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so he said. <laughs> Shout out to my son, David Doherty, diehard Liverpool fan. P.S. When is your dad back on the show? Hashtag he's a legend. Oh, my dad is a legend. Um, I, next week probably. Um, it's just it's a bit of scheduling things. We've we've used a couple of different people this week. But if people want my dad, John Machen, back on the show. In fact, we'll be doing build-ups again from next week. So we'll get him in. We'll try and get him in Monday to do a Tramia build-up, I guess. If you want that, give this video a like. If you want Payjack Nudes... Give this video a like. If we get to 10,000 likes on a video, it's more likely to happen. I'm just saying, because ground swells become movements. Movements make things happen. Just saying. Go on, Tom. Uh, so, Niv Football with two pounds. Nice Woo! One. Go on. Thank you. Uh, Go on. We need... We need Cater, Van Dyke, and a left back still. Yep, completely agree. We, well, whether it's Cater or Van Dyke, Liverpool definitely the left back, a centre half, <clears throat> and a, 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 an all action centre mid. Complete, completely agree on that. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Shot of Ahmed with another two pounds. Whoa! Uh, hashtag the Sena nudes. And by the way, I want us to go for Jimenez. Jimenez, which Jimenez? I'm guessing the. The one we covered the other day. Let us know which him it is in the comments if you wouldn't mind, please. Um, um, right, bring John back to Stephen Burke. Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, RJS96, Pajak pubes. Uh, Alexander Roberts, Pajak calendar 2018. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about here. A movement. And if we can make, and look, if people want to make suggestions for it, again, we asked for it on the podcast. If you if your groundswell becomes a movement, maybe we have a calendar girl style situation. Maybe it's for a charity of some description. Maybe there's a Payjack Nudes calendar for 2018. Do you want to make that happen? Ten thousand likes. As long as I'm not taking the pictures. As long as Tom's not taking the pictures, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll just set that up on a timer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Press a button. Sit down. Strike a pose. And we'll go from there. So there's one <coughs> more super chat. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, preach. Uh, five pounds. Ooh. Doesn't woo. say anything. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Fazy says probably Raul Jimenez the striker. Cool man. Thanks for that, mate. Um, okay. Sounds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Eric uh, Borlaug, local lad, Rooney to Liverpool. Yeah, no. 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 <clears throat> yes. Um, and Matt Smith says please mention Kieran Tini as a left back option. Kieran Tini. Is a left back option done? Um, yeah, shout. Is Hendo still an automatic starter? Time for a new captain, Najibet. No, I think he is still an automatic starter. There was an interesting thing. Chris and I did the Anfield Index, the Gags Tandem podcast last week. Um, 
<coughs> the stats that say Jordan Henderson. I'm getting the hiccups again. I don't know what's going on. What's going on with me? Um, just I can't even. I'm par I'd be paraphrasing. You go and listen to it. But the importance of Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson is almost the best in the league at what he does. Um, <coughs> Christ. So yeah, expect Jordan Henderson to start. Anyway, yes. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for commenting. The annotations will be here on time this week today. It's, yeah, it's it's purely because you're gonna wait like two hours. Go to my channel, subscribe. I've got a new video on why you need to be positive about Liverpool in this window and why there's no need for negativity or meltdowns around the transfer window. That'll be coming up later tonight. Subscribe to my TV, subscribe to Remo TV. Tom, uh, one more super chat. Go the football. I'd rather die than have Rooney at Liverpool. Well, there you go. Don't do it, Liverpool. Don't kill the football. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be back with more news and hiccups <laughs> tomorrow. God.